someone who feels the spirit needs just to know the grace.
we wanted to make the theme of our music for today praise and worship. A lot of times we sit out here, you see the choir singing, y'all scared us, and we look all pretty. But we want to bring y'all into the worship experience this morning. So I'm putting the lyrics up on the board. Alright? We want y'all to sing with us. Get into this worship experience. We come to church to praise God and worship God. So we want y'all to sing in the team and worship with us. Join us as we sing. Alright?
today's scripture I will be reading from Matthew chapter 5, 33 through 37. Again, you have heard that it is that it is said to those of old, you shall not swear falsely, but shall perform to the Lord what you have sworn. But I say to you, do not take an oath at all, either by heaven, for it is the throne of God, or by the earth, for it is his footstool, or by Jerusalem, for it is the city of the great king. And do not take an oath by your head, or you cannot make one hair white or black. Let what you said be simply yes or no. Anything more than this comes from evil. Amen. Amen. Let us stand from all that river below the sky.
Good morning, church. Good morning. It is so good to see each and every one of you here this morning. Do we have any visitors? And if so, would you please stand so that we may acknowledge you? Amen. All right. It is so good to have y'all here. Would either of y'all like to say anything? Bryson? I'm from Redden, from Mary, Georgia. I'm a member of the Trippie Temple Missionary Baptist Church from Memphis. Amen. 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 Good morning. I'm Tanisha. Um, Tanisha is my daughter. Um, so I'm here. I am a member of the Temple of Swinton. Amen. Amen. I'm Tanisha. I'm um, um, Red. Tanisha. I don't have a church member, but Amen. I just know who my Savior is. Amen. 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 All right, Bryson, you shout out for everyone. Shout out for everyone here. Amen. Bryson. Anybody else? All right, cool. All right, do we have any praise reports? If so, go on and shout them out. Let us praise God with you. Praise reports. Well, I praise God that each and every one of you were able to come out and join us for worship this morning. Let's give God some praise for that. All right. Prayer requests. Let's continue to pray for the bereaved family. Um, let's keep... Um, um, let's keep the following... Um, people in our prayers. Sister Michelle Rain Roberts, Sister Sandra Long, Sister Michelle Mobley, Sister Erica Booker, Brother Jerry Hunter, Mother Alfreda Williams, Brother Doug Atkins, Brother Ezekiel Roberts Jr., Brother Joseph Roberts, Sister Natasha Graham, Brother Keith Barnes Jr., Brother Anthony Roberts, Sister Lachey Cooper, Brother Javaris Paul, Sister Judy Roberts, Brother Chris Robbins, Sister Jennifer Roberts, Brother Ron Kelly, Sister Josephine Morris, Sister Stephanie Roberts, Brother Johnny Johnson, Sister Shirley Taylor, Brother Jonathan Hopkins, all the children in school, and do we have any prayer requests from the floor? Yes, Jane. When the foot gets better, we'll add that to the prayer request. Anybody else? If not, we'll have a moment of prayer. Let us pray. Our Lord and our God, Creator of all mankind, we come before you today, O oh God, with things listed upon a prayer list. Lord requesting supernatural intervening. Father, we come, O oh God, knowing that you're able to heal, knowing that you're able to subdue, knowing that you're able to make everything all right. Lord, you already know what we are in need of, Father, but we just stop by today and say, Lord, help. Lord, we just want you to help us with our situations. Help us with our ailments. Lord, help us with everything that we stand in need of. Lord, I know some people say, Lord, just do it. But Lord, we want to be in the mix. Lord, help me to help myself. Help me to get better. Father, we call upon you, Lord, where I can't do it, Lord, that you step in and do it for me. Father, we just thank you. Lord, we bless your holy name. Stop by those hospitals. Stop by the sick rooms, Father. Stop by the jails. And Lord, those prayers of the little itty bitty children. Lord, go to them independently, oh God. Let them know that you are a father here. And Lord, that you can do a man of all things. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Church in Augusta, Georgia, will be holding the fourth pastoral appreciation for Reverend Dennis Roberts Jr. Reverend Solomon Roberts Jr. is 
our pastor, who is going to be the proclaimer for that hour. We ask that if possible, we want everyone to show up to show support for Butler Creek and Dennis and Reverend Dennis Roberts Jr. because they came out and showed support when we were holding the pastoral and appreciation for Reverend Roberts. So if you sing in the choir, if you have got the plan at two o'clock, please drive on over to Bethesda. Come join us as we show our appreciation and help celebrate um, Reverend Dennis Roberts. Amen. And the next announcement is on April 27th at 10 a.m. at Mount Zion Amy Church, just outside of Statesboro, Georgia, is the annual planning and reorganization meeting for the Savannah Central District. Um, the pastors will meet at 9, but everyone is welcome to come out for the planning reorganization meeting. If you have time to come, please come. Rearrange your schedules as you need to. Well, on April 27th, it's a Saturday, come out for the annual planning and reorganization meeting. Amen. Those are all the, uh, also, come join us for Community Youth Choir. We have our five who come out every single time, but we're looking for more people to join. If you like singing, come out and sing with us. You don't have to be a member of Greater Bethel. We Amen. welcome everybody to come out and join us. Maybe Amen. one Sunday, if you have, if your church is holding something, just invite our youth out, and we'll come and sing for y'all. We Amen. just want it to be a fun thing that the youth in the community can come out and sing in the choir. Amen. All right. It's Saturdays from four to five thirty. Um, those are all the announcements I have to remember. Oh, I almost forgot. My bad. We have an invitation. All right, 2024 graduate, Jaden Akari Adams will be graduating from Scribbing County High School May 17th at 8 o'clock p.m. He is Georgia State University bound. Give it up for Jaden. As other 2024 graduates get ready for your graduation, if you bring us your invitation or your announcement, we'll announce it here so we can put a spotlight on you as well. All right. Those are all the announcements I have for you. Remember, there's nothing you can do to make God stop loving you. He loves you more than you'll ever know. John 3 and 16 proves it. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Uh, let us uh, listen to those announcements. Um, and for those of us who uh, aren't listening, please start listening so you'll know what's going on. Amen? Amen. Amen. Uh, we have a tendency to just sit and go through the motions, but if we become involved, we'll know exactly what's going on, and it's very beneficial to you. Amen? Amen. Very beneficial to you. You'll learn a lot by listening to the announcements. Let us just take heed. Uh, also, for those of you who can go uh, to Augusta to Augusta with us today, will you please, will you please, please, please uh, be there on time? We want to start on time so we can leave on time. Amen. 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 Uh, I live in Savannah. This is a two-hour ride for me to get home. Amen. Amen. Uh, I do want to get home. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Um, other announcements. Uh, Jaden. Jaden is a uh, graduate. But Jaden, what I need from you is for you to find some way to get your jersey. Some way. Okay. So we can post you in the Hall of Fame in the back. Amen. 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 Um, here at Greater Bethel, if you are a graduate, uh, my daughter as well, she's graduating this year as well. Um, if you are a graduate, please get me your jersey, your cheerleading uniform, your band um, uniform, so that we can put you in the Hall of Fame. Uh, we will encase your uniform, put your uh, projected achievements, your achievements and your projected achievements in writing, and sit it in the back in the social hall for everyone to see. Amen. Letting everybody know that when you become great, you become that actor or that doctor or that lawyer or that engineer or architect that you came through here first. Amen? Amen. 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 So, Jay, please give me that uniform. 
even if we we got to pay for it. Amen. Amen. We. Amen. You let me know. I got you. Amen. Oh, we got a coach that may be able to help you. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Uh, are there any other announcements? Anything anyone would like to add at this time? Amen. So happy to have all of you here with us today. We do have a baptism scheduled for today. Amen. 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 I say baptisms. Amen. 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 Uh, and we are very excited about it. May God bless you. Uh, are there any other announcements? Nothing else? Kids going? Amen. Back to the hands of our assistant, uh, CD Christian Education Director, uh, Sister Rachel Walker. Amen. All right. All right. It is second Sunday. It's Kids Corner. All the youth, 18 and under, come on down to the front row. Sit somewhere I can see you, where we can see you, so that as you raise your hand and ask questions, I can call on you. I'll try my best to pick a person. Come on down. We got extra prizes today as well. We have been given a couple of certificates for a free kids meal at Texas Roadhouse in Savannah for kids 12 and under. So if you're 12 and under and you answer a question right, I'll make sure to give you one of these along with the money. You only told us that's It's like 44 minus something. All right, all right. Okay. So I have 12 questions written down, but I also have bonus questions. And once we get to the end of it, if I need to ask some questions for our 12 and under so y'all can get more of these, I'll also ask some easy questions. But for the questions I have written down, they're all coming from books of the Bible, books of the Bible. This is part two of the books of the Bible series that we started last second Sunday. All right, the first question is, now, listen, I need you to stand up and wait to be acknowledged before you shout out the answer. Because if I don't acknowledge you and you shout out the answer, the person who I actually call on can steal your answer. So let's stand up, let me point at you, and then you get the answer. All right? And y'all who are sitting in the audience, please help me because I'll be looking this way and I might miss one of the ones behind me, all right? Okay. The first question is, let me get the whole question out. What is the last book of the Bible? Okay, Corday. Revelations. Revelations is correct. Revelations is correct. Question number two. What is the longest book in the Bible? This book has the most chapters. Sit down. I said, wait for me to read this. <laughs> now, wait. Ready, set, go. Jalen. Psalms. Psalms is correct. Psalms is correct. Jalen, are you under 12? You're seven. Amen. All right. How many chapters are in the book of Psalms? Corday. 150 is correct. You have a five-second penalty before you can jump out, Josie. Five seconds. One Mississippi, two Mississippi, five seconds. All right. The next question is, the four books of the Bible that recount the life of Jesus are called the four what? Yes, yes. The Gospels, the four Gospels is correct. And you get another one. Okay, pause. Easy question. Five seconds for you, Jalen. Five seconds. Easy question for my kids who are eight and under. Eight and under. If you eight and under, this question's for you. We're trying to give away these as well, all right? The first 
four books of the New Testament are four Gospels. Alright? Name one of them. Okay, yes. John is one. There John. are two. What is John. it? John. Oh, he said John. I made a different one. Uh, Luke. Luke is correct. Uh, All right. There's one more. Mark is correct. There you go. All right. Those are four guys. Right. What is the third gospel? <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Little man got it first? Yeah. What is it? What? Luke is correct. Yeah. <laughs> really? Really? <laughs> Luke is correct. All right. The next question is, what? Was Luke's profession? Physician is correct. Come on, he was over twelve, right? Oh, you twelve? You get one too. I keep thinking you thirteen. Physician or doctor—that is what Luke was. The next question is: What is the shortest book in the Bible? Yes, for that. Third John. Third John is correct. You now have a 10 second penalty. <laughs> 10 seconds. 10 seconds. Third John is the shortest book in the Bible. Question, bonus. How many verses are in Third John? 14. Huh? Not 15. Twenty-second penalty. That's not really. I want to get back to 
20 seconds counting. All right. Okay, fine. 15. Paul's letter to the church of the city of Ephesus is which book in the Bible? Ephesians is correct. Ephesians is correct. Ephesians. All right. This one is worth. I'll give you five dollars if. Here's the deal. I want you to give me the book, the chapter, and the verse. Book, chapter, and the verse. All right. Then which book, chapter, verse is this? Scripture located for, but the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. Who's standing up first between me? I'm gonna pause. Little man. Little man. Who? What? That is not it. I saw how long over here first. Y'all gotta sit right now. No, they gotta sit right now. Not 22, 26. Pause. That is okay. Uh, Who was it? It was part of that? Oh, okay. Yes. 22 to 23. Come on now. The price was right. How much money do you have? Why are we asking? One more. One more. Okay. This one has to be hard. I'm gonna give you another verse in the Bible. Oh, I got a good one. All right. This verse, I'm gonna read it to you. It's an easy one. It's an easy one. It's an easy one. Give me the book and chapter. Because I'm gonna read the entire chapter. Because the chapter is only five verses. And it reads, Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that hath made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endures to all generations. Yes. Do you know? Not Proverbs. Oh, I don't need it. Oh, oh, I heard it somewhere. Or is that an adult? That was an adult. What, little man, do you know it? Psalms. Psalms? I just don't even know that. You know what the song is? I'll give you $2. You know what the song is? You know what the song is? Okay. Janelle stood up. Janelle stood up. Okay, Janelle, what 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 chapter is it? It's not 117. Little man. 17. Not 17. 66. Ooh, we just guessed the numbers now. Psalms 100. Psalms 100. Psalms 100. Psalms 100. Psalms 100. I got two. I got two. Two dollars. Tell me where this scripture is found. I need all my adults in the audience to be on the lookout because this is an easy verse. For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Go.
that is it for Kids Corner today. Thank you for playing. Y'all can go back to your seats. Those encourage you to study, study, study. Amen. So that on the second Sunday you can come and be a part and be rewarded. Amen. At this time, we'll now have our tithes and offering. The musician will give us some traveling music. Choir will give us a selection and we'll come back and do what said the Lord. And we'll prepare for our baptism. Amen.
Amen. Uh, there was a man by the name of Jack walking along a steep cliff one day and he accidentally got too close and he slipped and fell off of the cliff. Mm -hmm. On the way down, he managed to grab a branch, mm -hmm. which temporarily, it, it stopped him from falling. Mm -hmm. And he looked down into that canyon and he realized he had about another thousand feet before he hit the bottom. Uh, he couldn't hang on to the branch forever, so Jack did what any reasonable person would do. Jack began yelling for help, hoping that someone who was passing by would hear him and lower a rope or something. Jack continued to yell. Suddenly, Jack heard a voice. The voice said, Jack, Jack, can you hear me? Jack said, yes, yes, I can hear you. He said, are you all right? Jack says, yes, but where are you? I'm the Lord, Jack. I'm everywhere. The Lord God? He said, yes. That's me. God, please help me. I promise that if you just get me out of this, I'll stop sinning. Get me out of this. I, I, I promise I'll, I'll go back to church. I'll do everything that you want me to do. I will serve you for the rest of my life. God said, easy on the promises, Jack. Let's, let's get you down from here right now. Mm -hmm. Then we can talk. Mm -hmm. Now here's what I want you to do, Jack. Listen carefully. Jack said, I'll do anything, God. Just, just tell me what you want me to do. God said, okay. Let go of the branch. Mm -hmm. Jack said, what? Mm -hmm. God said, I said, let go of the branch. Just trust me. Let go. There was a long silence for a while. Finally, Jack yelled out. Help! Help! Is there anybody else here? It's a short story in form of a joke, but if you don't understand it, you'll probably get that later. But well, from this short story there, uh, uh, from this joke, if we were to break it down, the main issue here is that Jack's mind keeps him from getting rescued. Amen. Something is keeping him from trusting the voice of God. He's been hanging on for dear life for quite some time, and things are getting very uncomfortable. And God came to Jack, giving him a way to be saved. But Jack is trapped in his mind because he does not trust God. And this, this creates a problem. This alone is the thing that's killing Jack or will be his demise. And for some of us today, we're in the same predicament that Jack is in. Some of us maybe may not be hanging off of a cliff per se, but some of us are trapped in our minds and we can't get free from ourselves. Amen. We can't seem to escape. Yeah. Not only that, but some of us are trapped and we know it. Amen. Some of us are trapped right in our minds, scared to go forward, scared to go backwards, scared to move right and left. We know that we are trapped and we still won't accept the help from God. Some of us, we, we don't want to don't want to be rescued. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. mm. We don't want a new idea. Yeah. We don't want to get any higher. Yeah. We don't want to understand. Amen. We don't want to go to the next level. Mm. We don't 
want to feel better. Some of us live fine right where we are. But the Bible says to us, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. So in other words, we should not be satisfied right where we are, but we should constantly be renewing ourselves. Moreover, we should be getting better day by day. Some of us know that we're weak. But what are we doing to strengthen ourselves? Some of us know that we need to study our word a little more. But how many of us are even starting the process? That's why the first thing the enemy tries to reach is your mind. He knows that after he gets your mind, he can literally control your body. And if we stop surface searching, we will understand that the body is most definitely connected to the spirit. In other words, the enemy, if he can control your mind, he can control every aspect of your being. And some of us have already let the enemy into our minds. What do you mean, Rev? He tells you things that you're not capable of doing. He tells you that you will fail. He tells you you're not strong enough. He tells you that you're weak. That you're incapable of doing a certain thing that you want to do. Knowing that it's the best thing for you. He keeps you trapped in your situation when God wants you to have a way out. And he is pulling us away from what God is trying to do and what God is trying to give us every day. The enemy has a hold on some of us and we just need to tell him. In the name of Jesus, loose me. For you have no power over me. Loose me. Let me go. For God is my protection. Loose me. Let me go. Here in our text, we find some physical dynamics which apply to us today in a spiritual manner. Mm-hmm. We find that Lazarus was sick. Mm-hmm. How many of you have ever been sick before? Yeah. How many of you know what it feels like to be sick? Yeah. It's not a good feeling. Yeah. It's not a good feeling whether you're mentally sick, whether you're physically sick. Coughing is not a good feeling. Stopped up and congested is not a good feeling. Right. Having a fever is not a good feeling. Having the chills when it's warm outside is not a good feeling. Not being able to walk, pain in your body, you can't speak, you can't swallow, you 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 got a headache. It's not a good feeling. Sick is not good. And some of us, we are spiritually sick. And some of us, we know we need to be healed. We, we, we're still not searching for that spiritual healing. And some of us have already come in contact with our doctor and we've been made well already. But a lot of us, we're still spiritually sick. We know we need the physician named Jesus to help us with our issues. Some of us have addictions. That we need to get well from. But Lazarus here was sick unto death. Next thing we understand is that Martha and Mary called to Jesus who did not move until the second day. Uh, Somebody said, that's how I know Jesus was black. They say, how? They say, you may not come when you want. But you're right on time. In our lives, we have to understand that Jesus does not move on your time clock. God does not move on your time clock. But God moves when he sees fit. And we have to understand that when God moves for you, it's not for you to keep it to yourself, but it's a testimony so that someone else who's going through what you've been through can be healed from what you're going through. 
See, God uses other people to get things done sometimes. Yeah. We know that God is omnipresent. We know that God can make a way out of no way. We know that God can do it. We know that God can fix it. But God can use you as a vessel. Lazarus was dead and it was a custom during that time to wrap the body and bind the body and lay bandages for the grave which was a tomb. Amen. How many of you feel wrapped up sometimes? Amen. Stiff. Yeah. Can't go nowhere. Yeah. The money ain't right. You can't do what you want to do. Feel binded sometimes, like things aren't going to work out on your behalf. you just stuck in a place and there's nothing you can do. Yeah. A lot of us, we feel like that on a daily basis, but God wants you to come up out of your grave clothes. Yeah. God wants you to be able to move freely. Right. God wants you to have life and have it more abundantly, but it is on you to break free and tell those grave clothes to lose you. Yeah. When Martha Mary heard Jesus was there, they went to him. Yeah. This is what we have to understand too. We got to understand that we can't fix everything by ourselves. Yeah. A lot of us, we say, I, I just do it by myself. I just take care of it myself. I just, I just handle it by myself. But we have to understand that Jesus is also in the process of helping. Yeah. You got to understand that when you have an issue, sometimes you have no control over that you can go to God and God can fix it for you. Yeah. God can intervene and say God can move mountains. Yeah. God can heal the sick. God can raise the dead. God can do all things. Yeah. And we know these things but we still won't go to God with our problems. Yeah. Even problems in our marriage, problems in our household, problems in relationships, problems on our job, problems with our health, we still need to go to God because sometimes you just can't Bible say that when Jesus got there, he wept. Amen. Somebody asked the question, why did Jesus weep? Because Lazarus was his good friend. Amen. Some of us, we need to cry sometimes. Amen. What does crying do? Somebody, you know, they tell men, you should not cry. Even men ain't supposed to cry. They don't put it all in the songs. They don't put it everywhere. But let me tell you what crying does for a person. That is the body's natural way to relieve stress. Sometimes you're going to have to cry. Sometimes you're going to have to get in your car, drive somewhere, and just have a good cry. And I know some of us, our egos are so big because we've been trained, we've been taught that nobody should see you cry. Whether nobody Drive off somewhere and have yourself a good cry so you can relieve the stress and the pain that you have burning yourself. And Jesus then called Lazarus. He said, Lazarus, come out. Jesus is calling you. Jesus is calling you. Jesus is calling you. He's calling you out of that mess that you're in right now. Amen. He's calling you out of the drug dealing. Yeah. He's calling you out of prostitution. Yeah. He's calling you out of adultery. He's calling you out of all of these things. Yeah. Calling you out of sin. Mm -hmm. Calling you out on your mess yeah. that you know you're doing. Yeah. It's time to clean up. Bible says that he came out. How many of you want to come out? How many of you want to come out? A lot of people don't want to come out. He came out with his great clothes on and Jesus saw him and said loose him. Loose him. Let him go. I got three points and then I'm going to let you go. Is that all right? Short points. Let me say that. Short points. Number one, some are sick. Some 
some of us are sick and we need to get away. Some of us are sick and you know what you suffer from. You know what your sickness is. You know it's something that you said to yourself in your mind, I need to stop doing this. Everyone who's doing something that they know they don't need to do are saying to themselves, I need to stop doing this. If it's in your mind, then you should go ahead and make sure that you do something about it to get well. Amen? Amen. And if you feel like you're not strong enough, call on the name of Jesus. Number two, Number two. Jesus is calling your name. How many of you have ever felt somebody or something tugging at you? And some of you still fighting it right now. Some of us know we're supposed to be giving God's word, but we're sitting down because you don't feel comfortable. See, when you're dealing with Jesus, you'll never be comfortable. You're always supposed to be uncomfortable because you're doing something new. Amen? Anytime you step out on your faith, you're going to be uncomfortable. Just like Jack hanging from a branch, thousand feet down to his death, God comes to him and says, Jack, all I need you to do is let go. See, what Jack didn't realize was down about five feet, there was a ledge that led to a king that on the other side, he had a way out. My brothers and my sisters, God is telling you today to let go of that mess. Because just a few feet away is the blessing that's been waiting for you all your life. And because you won't let go and trust God, you're missing out on the biggest blessing that you ever could experience. Number three, come out of your grave. Some of us been sick, we've been dead, and we've been buried. You're still laying there in the grave. Nothing is moving you. Nothing is getting you excited. Nothing is making you anxious. Nothing is propelling you forward. Nothing is getting you to get up and go. Nothing is making you happy. I'm telling you, somewhere in your mind where the enemy is nesting, we need to flip that nest over, open up the doors, and invite God in so that you can have the abundance of joy that God wants for you. God wants you to have life and have life more abundantly. Some of us need to get up out of our graves because Jesus is calling you and tell your grave post to lose you and let you go. Some. Sometimes you have to speak to your own situation. Feeling sick? Lose me. Let me go. Feeling depressed sometimes, you tell depression to lose you and let you go. You're having the spirit of being held back, tell it to lose you. Let you go. The spirit of doubt, tell it to lose you. Let you go. The spirit of fear, tell fear to lose you and let you go. Trapped in your own mind, tell that spirit to lose you. Let you go. Attack and held by the enemy, tell. You're keeping me from my blessing. You're keeping me from my spiritual promotion in this physical plane. Deep, let me go. All of you are due a promotion in the spiritual realm. But the reason why we cannot stand up and accept our promotion is because there is something mentally, physically, or spiritually that's holding you back. Amen. When you get home tonight and you go into your prayer closet, which is in secret, and you fall down on your knees tonight, tell God you need his help. Tell God you're looking for your spiritual promotion. Tell God that anything that's binding you, in the name of Jesus, loose me and let me go. Do you believe today? Do you believe that God can do it for you? Do you believe that God can fix it for you? As we stand to our feet, having faith is the key to all things. Amen. Trusting God is the key to all things. Amen.
loose me. Let me go and have faith that it shall be done and it will. The doors of the church are open. There may be someone who's out of the yard of sin. Maybe there's someone who is looking for a church home. Maybe there's someone who wants to be baptized or saved. We ask that you come right now. Don't wait for tomorrow, for tomorrow may be too late. Maybe there's someone who's been praying for a long time. You feel like your prayers are not being answered. Come. Will there be one? Now, today we have candidates for baptism. We ask them to come right now. Amen. All candidates for baptism. Now, we do have one who opted for the second Sunday in May. Amen. Amen. And we look forward to that one as well. Amen. All candidates for baptism, please come forward. Amen. There he is. Let's give God some praise in the air. Amen. Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. 
Who presents these children for this sacrament of Christian baptism? Man, would you personal, would you, my personal example, live before this child and a life that becomes the gospel? Will you encourage him to give regular attendance to the appointed means of grace, such as ministry of the word, the public and private worship of God? In order that he may know these things better, Will you read and encourage him to read the Holy Scriptures, learn the Lord's Prayer, the Ten Commandments, the Apostles' Creed, the Catechism, and all other things a Christian ought to know and believe to his soul's health, in order that he may be brought up to lead a virtuous and holy life, remembering way always the baptism does represent unto us the inward purity which inclines us to follow the example of Savior of our Savior Christ. Will you teach him that Christ died and rose again for us? So should we who are who are baptized die into sin and rise again to righteousness? Will you continually encourage the subduing of all corrupt affections and daily endeavor to see? that they grow in virtue and godliness. Amen. Amen. Your church. Do you renounce the devil and all his works, the vain pomp and glory of the world, with all covetous desires of flesh, so that you will not follow nor be led by him? Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only begotten Son, our Lord, and that he was conceived of the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, and he suffered on the part of his Pilate, and was crucified, dead, and buried, that he arose from the dead on the third day, that he ascended into heaven and sits on the right hand of God, the Father Almighty, and from there he shall come again at the end of the world to judge the quick and the dead. And do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Church Universal, and the communion of saints for the remissions of sins, the resurrection of the body, and everlasting life after death? Will you be baptized in this faith? Will you then obediently keep God's holy will and commandments? and walk in the same all the days of your life. Amen. Oh, merciful Father, grant that the old Adam and his persons may be so buried that the new man in them shall rise. Grant that they may have power and strength to have victory and triumph against the devil, the world, and the flesh. Amen. Grant that they being here dedicated to you by our offices and ministry may also be endued with heavenly virtues and everlastingly regarded through your mercy. O oh, blessed Lord God, who does live and govern all things, world without end. Amen. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, whose most dearly beloved Son, Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of sins, did shed out of his most precious sign, both blood and water, gave commandment to his disciples that they should go teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Regard, we beseech you, the supplication of this congregation. Again, sanctify this water, this holy sacrament, and grant that these persons now be baptized, may receive the fullness of your grace and ever remain in the number of your faithful youth and elect children. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Sheldon, take me to the water. I
Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. Shall we? Take us out. Yes, sir. We do praise God. Sweet communion of the Holy Spirit. Rest with